musician. Welcome, Darren. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> how, are, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good to have you in the studio. I think, uh, at least for, for it's my first time uh, having a, a, a musician here who has promised not to uh, make me disappear through the course of the show. Um, but the, we can't say the same for Steve. Steve, I think he, he may saw Steve in half and yeah. throw away the pieces. <laughs> but, uh, I probably should disclose that before you do it. No. A anyways, Darren, it's a pleasure to have you on. Why don't you tell our audience a little bit about how you got started and what it is that you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a professional magician. I've been doing magic for about a little over 12 years now and um, I was a little kid growing up in uh, Boston I, I live in Brighton and I went to a, a magic show in uh, Las Vegas I saw some some Matt King and uh, some David Copperfield in Boston too and it was really awesome to see like how they connected with the crowd and I used to watch the Copperfield specials when I was a little kid so I ended up going to uh, Vegas with my family and I saw a Houdini magic shop Oh, wow. I ended up uh, getting a bunch of stuff. They taught me how to like levitate things in the back room. They opened up the shelf case and they're like, "This is how you do it. Don't tell anybody else," you know. And then I ended up finding a joke shop in Boston, and so I grew from there, and um, just learned from books and DVDs primarily, you know. So, you, how long have you been performing it uh, live for audiences? Um, about eight years now. Oh wow! So. And, and you perform all over New England? Yeah, I, I travel all over the place. Actually, I've been to Maryland, uh, New Jersey, uh, New York. I'm actually going to New York this weekend to work uh, for a corporate event. Um, performing at a picnic outing. Oh, nice. A lot of corporate events, so Fortune 500s, and uh, I do lectures and uh, work with trade shows. Oh, wow. So you performed uh, magic into a real entrepreneurial venture. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so how much of, of the stuff uh, that you're doing is lectures versus, I, I'd imagine your lectures are pretty interactive. You're um, doing magic yeah, pretty, oh, absolutely. Like today, like I don't do too many now, but back in the past I used to run all the after school programs in uh, Somerville for magic. It was called the Art of Magic. Oh, nice. So I taught uh, magic to all the, uh, I think it was maybe can, uh, oh, maybe second grade to maybe f seventh graders, you know? Oh, wow. But it was fun. Uh, but I uh, uh, I work with youth programs like Elliot. Like yesterday I did a resource fair, so I helped promote, um, you know, higher learning and, uh, and different uh, youth organizations with magic. So it sounds like you knew from a very young age that you wanted to be a magician. I did. I did. Uh, it was tough because I'm going through college and everything, trying to figure out where you fit in in life, you know? That's now, the tough part. Now, was it magic specifically, or was it entertainment or performance? What, um, what, what drew well, you I was to always, it? I was always a shy kid growing up, and it was really awkward. I was socially awkward. Uh, in high school, I would always shake. I would tremble. Like, when the teacher would call up, oh, you know, it's time to do your speech. Or even when they tell you, to, oh, Darren, go read this little spot right here when you're... When you're you got the little book or whatever. I would tremble and I would stutter. It was so bad. But once I started getting into magic and I did a couple tricks and you saw how it interacted with people and how it connected with them, it was it was amazing. That was magic in itself. Oh wow! I so it really that. transformed your personality. Yeah, and brought, it, brought it, it opened out. me up a lot, and and I it actually taught me how to you know magic taught me how to like cold call people. You know, like I sold my business. I wanted to do it so badly that I would go into restaurants, sell my business, wear a suit and tie like basically BS my way through and set up an interview with the people and work that restaurant and perform magic there weekly. Oh, wonderful. So, so you're really from the ground, from the grassroots and developed this whole thing and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, I think it's interesting is people don't always look at the arts and think of it in, in a business sense, but really you are an entrepreneur. I mean, you can put bread on your table, so to speak. You've got to go out there and sell yourself. Yeah, exactly. And, That's uh, how I pay my know. bills and pay for my car, student loans and everything. Wonderful, wonderful. So, it's so um, has, has most of the stuff that you've done, uh, and, and I don't know a lot about magic, but I would imagine some of the stuff that you do is, is sort of really tried and true, the things that have been around for generations, they, and some they of the other stuff you I develop mean, yourself. Oh, absolutely. I mean, magic all has a root and it has a foundation. If it wasn't for, you know, some of the stuff I might be showing later looks awesome, but if it go, if you break down the moves and, and subtleties, a lot of it dates back to, you know, very old times, you know, before, like, some of them go back to, like, 1700s, you know, and they, uh, some of the, the earliest magic goes back to, like, hieroglyphics. They have, you know, pictures of pharaohs doing, like, cups and balls mm. in the day. It's really interesting stuff. Mm. So, can anybody learn magic tricks? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun... Fun skill to have, it actually opens up a lot of people's, you know, um, social skills, yep. communication skills. That's, it's a great party yeah. trick. Oh, yeah, it is, Conver it is, it is, yeah. it is, it is. Um, but yeah, I, I, I got my trenches, got my really hard work from working restaurants, worked a lot of restaurants, uh, I think over 20 restaurants that I performed at. Each week I would perform at different restaurants, two to three hours, sometimes four. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be nonstop, walking from table to table. Uh, there's certain things in restaurant magic, such as not performing when they're eating, you know, right. when to approach a table. Not some to etiquette. Look at, yeah, 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 some etiquette and not to be not awkward. Not to talk about their food too much. Pretty yeah. much, pretty much. And not to be awkward where you're going up to a table because when you're at a table, you're like, Who, who's this guy? You know, they think you're a manager or something like that, you know? So right. how to really get people to involved. 
So, uh, what uh, I'm going to ask you some uh, sort of off off the uh, off the chart type questions in terms of so what what was the most challenging situation you've ever been in performing? Um, have, have you had one where it just didn't work out? Uh, does that happen early so, on? Sometimes, some, I mean, over over some time, you you kind of learn how to deal with everything. But there's certain times that people just say the most randomest things. Like for instance, um, I don't know if you can put this on air, but uh, <laughs> well, well, wait, let, let, let's keep it uh, for the for the audience. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I just I was just doing. Uh, <laughs> there was a, a fair I just did this weekend um, in New Hampshire, and uh, I had a little girl that said some racial slurs to me. So oh. just to kind of learn how to avoid that, you right. know, how to and just kind of bounce it. Right. Yeah, and then yeah. I, she came back the next day, and everyone was having a good time, but it was still a little unsettling, you know. And like the mother was trying to like, she she was kind of saying how it was cute, but I was like, you can't support that, you know what I mean? Right. And I right. pretty much told the mother about that. I was like, you know, this is a bad habit. You shouldn't do this, you know. Um, right. Other than that, most of the time people. Are pretty good with it. They'll have a whole wall up, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think I add I add a lot of humor, so people get comfortable around me, and I kind of do self-deprecating jokes. So, so is it is it uh, a routine that you do depending on the time, or does the, does the routine change constantly? Is that part of what you do? Is you go back and develop new stuff all the time? A absolutely. I think it's a, I customize my magic. So whatever the client needs, or if it's like a family type of event, obviously I'm not going to have certain types of jokes, right? <laughs> but uh, um, if it's more of a adult crowd, I have a full like adult show, you know. And it's more of, um, you know, certain jokes that I would use when to throw in. And I've used these jokes so many times that it fits perfectly into the routines. And it's nice because it's like my baby, so yeah. no one else really does it. But um, I don't create too much magic my own, but I'll make it my own. So I add my own personality to it. So Good stuff. So, so what are your big, uh, big tricks? I, I know it's radio, it's hard to describe. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, I'm a big fan of mind reading. I've been getting into it more and more the past few years. But... Uh, some of the stuff is, you know, you make a bill vanish and it disappears and it ends up inside like a, like a lemon inside the woman's purse, you know? And, um, and then they take the knife and they cut it open and sign with their name, with their da the date and everything. Uh, some of the other stuff is like producing a, a bowl of goldfish out of an like empty shopping bag. You know what I mean? Wow. So can, can you make a lot of cash appear in my bank account? Sh should is we that? try that right now? <laughs> yeah. 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 It seems well, to always go in the other direction. <laughs> can you make more of Well, you know, let me show you something sure really interesting yeah. about money you were talking about. I think that's a trick everybody wants. I know, right? I, I mean, if more. you were doing magic, you wouldn't even do stuff with cards or coins. You'd probably do stuff with money, right? <laughs> so I was at the bank the other day, and here, I'll show you. I got some change, right? One, two, three, four, five. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah, yeah perfect. Watch. We got the video clip. We've got five single dollar bills in front of us this that is really uh, cool. Darren is pulling out. And, uh, there's a certain way of pulling the bills, and it looks like it's more money. Um, name a denomination more than five. Why? 20. Oh, wow, that's perfect. 20, right? Yeah. Ready? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Did you see it? That. Whoa. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 dollars. I like the way he did that. He just turned the singles into 20. Exactly. Yeah. That's how he makes the money, right? Exactly. Yeah. I should have gone higher. Yeah, yeah I know. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Got some Franklins cool. in there? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Nice stuff. Very but, um, well done. Very well that's done. That's your uh, cell phone, right, Steve? Yes, sir. Can I show you some really cool stuff? Please. Wash your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I actually see some uh, water droplets on this, right? Yeah. Do you actually know there's a. Uh, so app you can make it waterproof. No, I'll show you. Right. Darren has blown up a, a balloon in front of our producer yeah, Steve's cell phone. Yes, we can use my spiky here because I wake up and it's naturally just like that, right? <laughs> cool. We'll see your cell phone. Right inside, right? All right, and he's now placed the cell phone inside of a blown up balloon. And uh, that's that's impressive. Yeah. Now, you, now, now it's, it's waterproof, waterproof, right? Exactly. You can go swimming with this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can go skiing during the winter, and uh, you can even go on a nice safe date, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> very good. But, uh, just tie a little knot at the end, but in case somebody calls you, right? That's how you get it out. Extracted the balloon, the phone from the balloon. Back so you to you gotta practice safe texting. Yeah, right? Thank you. <laughs> Very nicely done. That's Very great. Nicely done.